I'm Olivia McGreevy with 88.3 The Sting, and today I am joined by Carlos, who is a part of Low Island. How are you doing? Hey, Olivia. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, thank you so much for chatting with me. So if you just want to start off by introducing yourself and maybe just telling us a little bit about the band. Uh, my name is Carlos, as you said. I'm the singer of Low Island. I also play uh, keyboards and guitars, and the band uh, has four people in it, myself, and then also Jamie, who plays guitars and keyboards. Felix, who's the drummer, and uh, Jacob, who is the bass player. We're a UK band, we're from Oxford, um, and we've been playing together for about five years. Um, and we came together, well, we're old school friends, so we've known each other, some of us in the band, since the age of like five or six. Mm -hmm. But the band itself is five years old, um, and we came together over a love of like electronic music, but also indie, dance music, um, the drummer has also got a background in jazz and Low Island was a way of bringing all of those things together under one roof. Um, and yeah, we've been going for about five years and hopefully coming out to the States for our first proper trip in March next year when we do South by Southwest. Amazing. I was actually just going to ask you, have you ever been to the US because you guys are from the UK? Do you guys ever travel over here or do anything here? We have not done anything as a band in the States. Mm -hmm. um, this would be our first time doing anything um yeah in the US but we've been like you know working with the, with people in the states mm -hmm. um getting music out to people such as yourself mm -hmm. um in preparation to hopefully do some touring and things like that we've got plans for next year and the year after and we've just started working with some agents out there so yeah we'd love to come and play and hopefully South by is the beginning of that journey how long have you been doing music like yourself have you been is this something you always knew you wanted to do or is this something you kind of just got into I've been playing in bands ever since I was maybe 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I got into music when I was around at my friend's house and he had like the Woodstock DVD mm -hmm. and we stayed up late. We were like, yeah, 10 years old. And and I just remember watching, I think it's Richie Havens who, who is like the first person who performs on the DVD. And, uh, and he plays a song called Freedom. And I remember just thinking, this is a this would be a pretty cool way to, to spend your life. <laughs> a band, or maybe even just as yourself, where do you guys pull inspiration from? Or what does your creative process kind of look like? So in the inspiration side of things, we we um started the band over a love of electronic music on the one hand, and then kind of bands, I guess indie bands on the other hand. So Jamie and I in the band were doing a lot of DJing, but we were also playing in bands with Jacob and Felix was playing in jazz bands. And we thought that Low Island was a great way or we wanted the band to be a way of bringing those things together. So it would be like, you know, I guess bands that have kind of done that for us have been bands like LCD Sound System and Caribou. You know, they've kind of, they're bands, but they're also playing dance music. And there's also a whole load of other influences coming in there. You know, with LCD, you've got, um, you know, Can and uh, ESG and that kind of disco influence. With And with Caribou, you've got some kind of, um, you know, house and techno very much at the forefront of a lot of their tracks. So those, uh, but then we also love the songwriting of Radiohead and Talking Heads and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's it's a tr it's trying to bring all those things together under one roof and then the way that the creative process usually starts is i'll have a sketch of an idea and it might just be guitar and voice it might be piano and voice it might have like a little drum loop as well but it, it's usually pretty simple and then i take it to the band um and everyone starts filling it in you know so we start building up building it up together and that can sometimes involve ripping the whole song apart and just taking a little bit of it that then becomes you know the main feature of the song or it can just involve propping it up with more forces you know it really depends but it tends to start with a, a small sketch of an idea that then we all we all try to build up together it's actually just recently released an album last month life in miniature what do you want to say about that album or kind of was there a different where did you guys pull inspiration for that or what did the process look like for this new album for life in miniature we um recorded it we we recorded it in a tiny little most of it in a tiny little village in France um and then also bits and pieces in London the process I guess followed 
along a similar route um the in terms of the inspiration behind the record it was it was basically a time capsule it was looking over three years um of my life that pretty much started like that as in the period of time it was looking over started at the beginning of the pandemic when I think for lots of people you know there was a huge amount of change that took place in people's lives some of it good some of it bad in my case you know um I left home for the first time um I fell in love but I also lost a lot of people close to me who probably would have probably would still be alive if there had been a pandemic um and it really felt like it, its own chapter that um, that period of time and so the, the album tries to kind of capture that as a whole and say this was this was its own little life and that's where the title comes from um and it also does that in a way that brings in lots of different memories so it's not like some sort of linear storytelling it's more like little fragments that you remember from that time it's little things you know like in can't forget i can remember my dad waving uh, when i left home the day i left home and and you know didn't and didn't go back to live there or i can remember like a little fragment um that my grandfather who passed away during the pandemic that little fragment that he uh of writing that he had given to me and i'd incorporated that into the lyrics or you know i have just next to me his piano um and i sampled that in the track robin so like you know it was it's not a story necessarily it's trying to kind of bring together lots of different memories and then put them in the record itself maybe sounds self-indulgent but hopefully it wasn't in the sense that like I know that everyone experienced so many changes and big life moments in those three years that they they're not going to forget yeah. and I was hoping that you know I was trying to make my own ones bigger than just me and trying to kind of make it like more all-encompassing because I, I hate the idea of um, music being self or, or lyrics and 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 songwriting being self-indulgent I, I I think one of the great things about songwriting is that it is how empathetic mm. it can be and how much it can speak to lots of people and so yeah I try always to use personal experiences as a springboard into making things that are more universal I guess you have a favorite song off of the album or a favorite few songs yeah um I have lots of different favorites, you know, um, and it depends what day. I love the first track, Goodbye Bluefin. I think when the band, sometimes I think we're some, we're at our most comfortable when the band is being more experimental, because there's no there's no sense of like, oh, we have to write a hit or there has to be a great chorus. It's the emphasis is on interesting sounds and interesting rhythms and um, just having fun really. And and I think sometimes when you're when you're working on songs which are like the the bangers or whatever that there's they are they can be much harder um because everyone has like a certain threshold of like how poppy they're comfortable with something sounding or whatever it might be so that yeah goodbye bluefin was one of those tracks which was just really fun to put together um the other one i really love is into the blue um which is towards the end of the record um just because I think it's it has it has this moment in the bridge where the track just kind of explodes um and then comes back in on itself again it there's lo there's lots of really nice drama in that song and the sentiment I think of that track is very beautiful so yeah those those two stand out for me but you know I'm I'm proud of the yeah, I feel very proud of the whole of the record as a whole. But you do have some um, tour dates coming up in the UK in the new year. What can mm. your audience expect to see at those shows? Those shows will be a proper a proper tour of the second record. So we're rehearsing the second album at the moment. We're learning how to play all the songs. Um, so yeah, a bit a set list that involves more of the second album. Also, we're also working on new stuff as well. Still, always working on new music. So hopefully trialing out some new songs. Um, yeah, and, and just trying to kind of have fun with the record. We always try to make, we always try to breathe new life into the songs in the live show. You know, so we'll extend sections. We'll, we'll just play with the songs more. So it's not just showing up, playing the song as it is on the record. There'll always be, you know, there'll always be additions and changes. Um, and then pretty much straight after that tour finishes, 
we're coming to the states um and i know bands say that yeah we're coming to the states but the states is massive and ohio as i was just looking at the map is not that close to austin which was where we'll be but hopefully it will be the start of more u.s dates to, to come do you have any other plans or projects or anything you would like people to be keeping an eye out for we're gonna release a deluxe version of the album in the new year so that's going to be some like unreleased tracks from the record um and you know some like alternative versions of some of the songs because like i said to you a lot of the songs in their original kind of existence were just piano guitar uh piano voice so sorry piano guitar piano voice guitar voice um and i i, I personally really like hearing the songs like that because it's it takes away the noise and just says this is the song in its raw form so yeah we're going to do we'll, we'll do that and um we're working on a lot of new material always and hoping for a busy touring year next year just hoping to play lots of shows and keep on the road so yeah keep definitely keep an eye out for all of that and where can our listeners follow you so they can keep an eye out for everything i think the best place is instagram although increasingly i'm told i'm an old fart for being on instagram i need to we need to we need to we need to broaden our horizons but we can we're we're all, we're on all of the we're on all of the platforms but instagram is the one that i spend the most time on so if you want to actually know what we're doing that will be the one thanks so much for supporting the band and for um having me to do an interview i really appreciate it 